plenty of power, that's for sure. Yes, she does have plenty of power, and more importantly, that power is available anywhere, right? Right, to right. Irrespective of what throttle opening you're at. It is relentless all the way. All right, there you go. Now there you there really, you see, yeah. oh yeah, I really feel it full. What an episode of JLL's Garage, the car we're featuring today, the 2020 Draco GTE, if you've never heard of it, uh, well, there's a reason for it, because this is the very first one. You know, I, I find it fascinating in an era where car companies were disappearing at an alarming rate in the 80s and 90s, Pontiac and Oldsmobile, and all of a sudden we have new car companies coming in, Tesla, McLaren, and now we have Draco, and a number of others. And I think it's, uh, it's really a testament to American ingenuity and uh, and engineering. Let's meet Shiv, the co-founder of uh, Draco Motors. How are you? Hi, Drake. Thanks for having me here. Well, thanks for coming. I, I find this fascinating. This is an all-electric car. It is. It's 1,200 horsepower. 1,200 horsepower. Okay. With four motors. The advantage to four motors as opposed to two... The essence is the motors are inboard, and mm -hmm. they are driven by half shafts, but there's four of them, which means that this is the first um, production automobile um, that has no differentials. Okay. So the motors control the wheels directly in both directions. Okay. Front, but all four motors are the same horsepower or they're more... They are. They're identical. This car is, is perfectly symmetrical. Okay. So we have 300 horsepower approximately at, at each corner, okay. um, giving you that 1,200 total. Okay. And lithium-ion batteries, obviously? Lithium-ion batteries, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And how many volts is it? Um, this car is 450 volts. Okay, 450 volts. Okay, that's not outrageous. Um, no, I mean there's there's you know movement towards you know 800 volt architecture, obviously because you can uh, you can reduce the current. Right. But um, we built this car as a as a as a 450 car. And it almost seems like 1200 horsepower is an unheard of number in a production Actually, 1,200 horsepower is a great number, but the real you know, differentiating factor mm -hmm. of an electric car is the torque, and this car can produce 6,500 foot-pounds of wheel <laughs> torque. That's it. I mean, that's, there's not even a dyno that can register that much. There isn't. They all just break. Yeah, they all just break. Okay. Were you setting out to make us, actually this is a four-seater luxury car. It is. Our sort of design ethos was that the, uh, an electric supercar needs to be massively usable, right? right? You need to have good ground clearance, you need to be able to take passengers, you maybe throw the kids in the back, throw a few bags in the back. So, you know, it's, it, we want to sort of reinvent this whole notion of, of grand touring. Right. So what is the goal here? Is it goal to have proprietary technology you can sell to other manufacturers? Is it to st build a car company? Uh, where do you see it going? We would really like to build cars. That's right. our passion. Right. That's what drives us. And um, we're not sure exactly what the future will bring, but we are heavily focused on building you know, uh, exhilarating driver-focused supercars. Now this car is what, a million two five? It is indeed. We're building 25 pieces to order okay. um, for discerning ladies and gentlemen. I mean, in an era when the Porsche Taycan the turbo is 184, the Tesla 150, obviously not this much horsepower, but not dissimilar. I mean, I mean, those are two of the fastest accelerating cars you can buy at 10 times more the price. So um, when you think about these current electric cars, mm -hmm. they're very good at accelerating in a straight line. Mm -hmm. The superpower behind this car is the fact that this car can rotate like no other car. In fact, the reason we got into this is because we want to change the fundamental paradigm of how a vehicle is steered. Right. If you think back to it, Jay, we go back to Henry Ford and, and Mercedes-Benz, you have one engine, and then you have a bunch of differentials and a steering wheel, and you hope that when you turn the wheel, uh -huh. the car will go where you want it to go. Right. In this car, it's integrated. The car knows, for example, that you want to turn, because we look at multiple variables, including the, the steering angle sensor, the brake and accelerator position, we compute the slip angle, lateral G, wheel speed sensors, so this car can turn like no other car and hope that when you drive it, you'll feel that it actually, you know, makes your brain stop working. Well, it's not hard to make my brain stop working, actually. I was accused of that 
through high school and college. <laughs> is it four-wheel steering? It is not four-wheel steering. Okay. The secret is using differential torque to rotate the car. Because okay. as you know, when you go around a corner, right. the arc described by the outer wheels and the inner wheels is different. Right. right? You're so turning which is, a different route. Which yeah. is why you need a differential. Right. Well, this car doesn't have any differentials, mm -hmm. and that control occurs in software. And that's in the forward direction. But to truly control the car, you need to be able to decelerate the wheel as well. And traditionally, in a regular car, you have to use the brakes, mm -hmm. right? But in a car with no differential and electric motors, you can decelerate each wheel individually in milliseconds. So you get very, very low latency and essentially full digital wheel control in both directions. So uh, are you regenning also as you decelerate? Um, we can. So there's a multiple options for regenning. So we can regen, and we can talk about that later when you drive the car, we'll show you the controls, but there are multiple regen modes that you can engage, or even disable regen. I can't tell if visually the wheelbase is long, or it's just the fact that the wheels are set at the far. For example, when you look at the Citroën that's over there, the DS, people think it's quite a long wheelbase, right. but the wheels are set so far right. out at the corners Indeed. that gives the illusion of it. I can't tell if that's the case here. What is the wheelbase about? 116, 117? That's exactly right, 116. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because it looks like a long car, but it's probably the same wheelbase as a Tesla S, is that about what you said? It's saying? about the same. Um, okay. You know, our goal here, I mean, the reason it looks long is because the car is really pushed down to the ground through mm -hmm. the styling elements, right? And it has that stance, and it, it's meant to evoke that long bonnet look of a, a Targa Floria or a Mille Miglia gotcha. car. Right? That was our design inspiration. Like, I would say that probably the A6 GCS Maserati would probably be the starting point of, gotcha. of that long bonnet vision. So is this uh, patented technology, this torque vectoring that you have? Does everybody, anybody else have this? Um, I believe you know, other people claim to have it. We right. do hold several patents on it. But you know, the thing about a car is that you know, it needs to be able to perform in a wide variety of conditions. Right. And developing that software takes a long time. And you know, our chief engineer um, has been working on it for over 10 years. See, see I, I just never heard of this company until literally the car showed up. Right. Well, we've been, you know, we want it to be stealth because, as you know, Jay, a lot of people are announcing electric cars right. that, you know, you know, maybe there's a picture of them or a render, but we wanted to have, you know, a full production car right. running at full speed before we told anybody anything. Right, and right. This is the fruit no, of our labors. No, that's admirable. No, it, it's fascinating. I mean, the price is so staggering is what, is what so, kind of throws people off. You go, oh, let's see if I finance that, that's... 10,000 months at the, you know, it, it gets a little. Well, in order to build this car, Jay, yeah. we had to create our own battery. There are no commodity components in this car. This is a bespoke hand-built car, including the battery. We built a 90 kilowatt hour battery that's in the floor of the car that right. produces 2,200 amps of pulse current, and okay. it can do 1,800 amps of, of continuous current. That's, that's a megawatt at 450 volts. So in order to build that kind of technology, right. it does take a lot of money. I mean, we don't have a gigafactory. Right. So, you know, the, the costs are because of our extremely small series production. Is it, is it a series of small batteries put together, or all one? Um, the battery starts off, we have a brick. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, the brick is uh, 88 cells in parallel. Right. And then we have 108 of those in series. Okay. And in fact, this because this car already had a tunnel, um, the battery is actually a U-shaped. And so we've, a been, we've been able to fit 90 kilowatt hours into, um, into the floor. Well, you say this car already had a tunnel. So you developed the car before you developed the battery. Well, this car, we reused you know, a VIN. Um, so that's how we're able to have uh, a street legal car. We're, we're modern, you know, next generation hot rodders, essentially. I got you. Well, so what was, the, what, was the, what was the platform? This is a 2012 Fisker Karma. Oh, OK, OK. Gotcha. So you're starting with that, with that chassis. Platform. Well, you see, you know, um, Elon started the same way with the Lotus Elise chassis. Right, right. Here. There was a roadster here yesterday. So it's a, you know, we, we decided that it was the best way to be able to get the car on the road. Because you know, and you've said in several of your shows, right. people build all these cars, but then you can never run them on the road. Right, so right. this allows us to be okay. 50 state legal and um, available to buy anywhere in the United States. Okay, so you haven't crashed into this as a Draco yet. 
we we we're not required to. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But we haven't made you know. Uh, significant changes to the crash. In fact, we've made no changes to the crash right. structure at all. So this car is, you know, is, is perfectly homologated. Right. Has okay. airbags. You know, all the safety features. And everything you need. Brakes are car what, carbon ceramic. Brembo carbon ceramics, three ninety five, okay. six pistons okay. up, up front. Cool. And how does uh, this? There's no. So you need the. You need the key. So you can't say, honey, go wait in the car. She can't. She can't. <laughs> well, she can have her own key. She can have her own key. So anybody has a key just to get in the car. Right? Well, you know, I think uh, Mr. Koenig says car needs, you know, a key as well to gotcha, open it. Gotcha, gotcha. As you say, there's no transmission. So you direct drive through all. We direct drive. We actually have four gearboxes in the car. Right. Right. And those provide the reduction. So we have a 5.56 to 1 reduction ratio. And that's what gives us the, the torque multiplication. Because, you know, people often say, well, you know, Shiv, why are you quoting a, a wheel torque number instead right. of a motor torque number. And we always quote wheel torque because we only have a single gear, right? And so you're getting that, that multiplication all the time because you're not shifting. So your uh, front motors put out, all four motors put out exactly the same. Perfectly there's symmetrical. No, there's no bias. There is a bias control switch, and okay. we can talk about the controls later, but you can bias the car any way you want. Okay. So, so you, you can go symmetrical all-wheel drive, okay. which is obviously the preferred mode of operation. Right. On very twisty roads, um, you could back the front power off a little bit to help the car turn because you don't want to overpower the front. But it just depends on the driving conditions. The car is, is programmable from that standpoint. But it wouldn't do that automatically. Oh uh, no, we don't okay. believe that you want to do that dynamically. This is this is done to optimize driver feel because we're really focusing on driver capabilities. Okay, so the individual driver can just set it up the way he or she. Oh, he can just dynamically change it depending right. on the road that okay. he's on, right? On a on a fast, you know, sweeper at 120, it's different to maybe very tight turns at 55 in the canyons. And the batteries are liquid cooled. The batteries are liquid cooled. Okay. There are. Um, eight electric pumps, there's right. three radiators in the front, um, as well as a high voltage compressor that cools the glycol. So you want to, want to keep the batteries, what, about 74 degrees, something like that? Um, actually, they want to be, you know, batteries are closer to being around uh, room temperature between you know, sort of 30 to 45 degrees. Well, yeah, that's 75, yeah, that's oh, see, yeah. I apologize, yeah. I'm a centigrade man. Yeah, okay, yeah. And who is the designer of the car? The designer of the car is Louis Vermeesh. Okay. Um, he was creative director at Pininfarina for a long time, and he now has his own company called Grand Studio, mm -hmm. um, and they're in Turin. I believe the last sort of famous car that they did was the 458 Italia. Oh, okay. All right. Let's walk around and see. It's certainly a striking car. And you've got a proper trunk, front and back, I imagine. Well, no, no we'll, we'll, pull the hood off, we'll pull the hood open so you can see the front. There's a lot of hardware in this car right, right. to get that 1,200 horsepower. We have four motors, so they, it takes up all the space in the front. So there is no front. We have a real engine bay, which I'm very looking forward to showing you. And what, is, what does the car weigh? The car weighs 5,300 pounds. Okay. So uh, but all the weight is extremely low. Right. It has a very low uh, center of gravity, about 17. Um, and a very low polar moment of inertia. Can now, we open the trunk? We certainly can. We can open the trunk. And you see, you know, Jay, what we have here is the rest of the powertrain. Well, we haven't seen the front yet, but we have two inverters, two motors, two gearboxes. And that's your charge port right there? There are two charge ports. We have a DC fast charge port as well as a standard J7 to 72 for AC charging. So you've got to have the trunk open to charge it. Well, in this car, Jay, we just couldn't bear to cut any holes <laughs> in the body once we've seen it. But for customer cars, they can specify whichever location they'd like, right, which is typically right, okay. you know, on the rear fender. So one's an AC charger, one's a DC charger. Correct. We support okay. DC fast charging up to 150 kilowatts with either Shadamo or CCS, depending on the customer's preference. Okay. Now, you said uh, engine and gearbox, two gearboxes back here. Is it a two-speed? Single speed. We have a single speed 5.56 to 1 reduction mm -hmm. ratio. But essentially, we have two gearboxes in a single housing. So you have two motors going into uh, two gearboxes in a single central housing and two independent output shafts. OK. Right? And then we have exactly the same up front. Oh, OK. And then, of course, each motor has an inverter. And the inverter is the, the heart of an electric car. That's what converts the high-voltage right. DC into AC. AC. Right, 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 OK. 
What are your losses with the gearbox? Do you know? The gearbox it? losses are extremely low yeah. um, because there is no shifting, there's no clutch, right. there's no multi-play anything, and of course there's no differentials, right? So there's, the losses are extremely low. Okay. Yeah, I would think you'd want to have some sort of port on it because then you got to leave your trunk open to charge it. Well, again, it depends where you're going to charge your car. Right, but right. like I say, this was just, you, we just couldn't bear it. Right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. Where would you like your transport, and Do you think right? a production car will have door handles? Because it seems like any time, Bob, you got my thing out of the car? <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, you can't get to it. Um, yes, we've actually developed um, uh, a new sensor technology, yeah, yeah. Um, which will allow you to just, you know, place your hand and the door will open. Can we open the front? Absolutely. Right, I'll, go around, I'll go around this side. Oh, the whole thing comes off? It does. Well, that's convenient. Honey, would you get the... Honey, would you and little Timmy get the hood? So these are your two separate motors here. Those aren't the motors, Jay. Oh, no, Those these, are the inverters. Oh, the, I mean the inverters. Indeed, and you can see that, you know, the high voltage uh, cables in there. So we have five cables because you have two DC right. and then three phase AC. And then underneath it, the black units are the motors, and in the center are the two gearboxes. What are these, copper cables? They are, they are, they are copper. Dread copper, yeah. That's right. Well, you got a lot of fluid moving around here. Right, so cooling is, you know, a big part of the car. We have three radiators. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're not just cooling the motors. We're cooling the high-voltage electronics. And the batteries, yeah. So which is yeah. the inverters, the DC-DC converter, and, of course, importantly, the battery. Gotcha, gotcha. Where are your hydraulic pumps, or does it... So the uh, steering is uh, Electric. electrically driven, but it's 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 hy it's got a, it's it's hydraulic. Right. So it still has you know a lot of good feel to it. Okay. So that runs on its own separate. It runs off its own separate right. twelve volt power supply. Right. Right. Which is provided by. But the I mean, DC, it runs DC on DC separate convert. fluid. It doesn't use the same. Yes. Yes. Fluid. No. It it uses uh, hydraulic fluid. Oh, hydraulic fluid. Absolutely. Okay. And there you see you know the, the hydraulic brakes as well. Uh, you see the the brake master. And tell us about the name. Where does the name come from? Uh, the name comes um, from uh, my business partner, Dean Draco. Oh, okay. And it's a very cool name. And he's a he's a car enthusiast, obviously. He is uh, like yeah. me, a major car enthusiast. Okay. So this is all uh, Fisker, the no. chassis, or uh, well, the the actual the underlying, I'd say the skeleton, right. right, is is a Fisker, and you know significant modifications have taken place to the car, um, and so I don't believe there's very many Fisker components left in this right. car at okay. all. Cool. Well, very good. What other other features before we go for a drive? Uh, traditional headlights and lighting and. All of that is, is fairly traditional. I think the main thing is, you know, the control system of the vehicle, the, what we call it the Quattro Manatino, and we'll, right. we'll fiddle with those, you know, as we're driving. Right. Um, but again, the main uh, differentiator for this car is its handling prowess, the fact uh, of how it can rotate, particularly post-apex. You know, when, when a lot of cars drape, and when you drive them on track, you have to wait post-apex. If you get on the gas too early, she's not going to go around the corner, right, right? right? With this car, you can get into the throttle extremely early. In fact, it challenges you corner after corner to get into the throttle even earlier. It's actually quite a, you know, a wonderful mind Have you challenge. taken it to Nürburgring or any of those places? Uh, not yet, but we did develop our technology at the Nordschleifer. In fact, right. we were there four years ago with our prototype, and we actually set a, a strict legal record. Oh, okay, okay. Has that been break, broken since? It has been broken since, yeah, uh, okay. you know, with this latest, you know, uh, Porsche versus, you know, Tesla. Right, right, uh, right. But again, it was, we weren't focused on it necessarily for, you know, the overall lap time. Gotcha. Um, but we will, you know, it's a wonderful place to develop dynamics of your vehicle at high speed. So there's really no maintenance for the customer to do other than maybe brake pads. It's like your Baker Electric, right? You right. Know, when's the last time you did any maintenance on that? Uh, I, I never have. I think 1909 was the last time. Well, there you time. go. 1909. Uh, so it's was, the same. So, yeah. you know, the reason why we didn't mind having that clamshell hood was because the only time you're really going to take the hood off is to show it to your buddies and they can help you take it off. And your range is how much? The range on the standard WLTP cycle is 250 miles. Electricity is like sex. Guys just lie about it, you know. It's one of those deals, you know. <laughs> I, like electric motorcycles, they come and they go, this goes 100 miles on a charge. 
and then I get on and they, they go 27 and a half miles. Well, let's put it this way, Jake. This is a 1200 horsepower supercar. Right. It has a dastardly desire to suck electrons. Right. 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 So, you know, you can discharge this car at an extremely high rate, but you can also charge it at an extremely high rate. We can maintain, you know, maximum charging current up to about 92, 93% in contrast to a lot of lesser batteries right. that, that you really have to back off at 80%. How, how how long, how long does it charge? On a 150 kilowatt charger, um, we can charge it in about uh, 30 minutes. That's oh, a full charge. That's a full charge. A full charge, well, and you can okay. do an 80 percent charge, or even a 90 percent charge, right. in, you know, in 24 minutes. Well, that's impressive. Let's uh, let's put the hood on and take it for a spin. Let's, let's do it. It's cool. Very cool. All right. Let's uh, give it a shot. Okay. Can you press two to let me in? No, oh, I gotta press two to let you in. All right. Oh, this is low. <laughs> Do you want to come back forward? There we go. So press the brake. Got the brake press. And then hit the hit the button. Hit the power button and let it go. Yeah, so the key with this car was, you know, we really wanted to focus on top speed right. and go 200 plus miles an hour. And so when you have a single gear ratio, you have to, you know, choose a fine balance between right. acceleration and top speed, right? Because, we, you know, the two-speed gearbox and all that, those are interesting, but it kind of ruins some of the, you know, simplicity and elegance of a mm -hmm. four-motor design. You know, because you're now introducing more mechanical right. stuff that is not really required. So it is quite addicting. You get a sound, so it feels right, real, right. right? You hear that? It's very turbine. And it's all drive-by-wire, correct? Um, yes. I mean, there are no cables. Are we getting the full 1,200 horsepower now? You are. It doesn't feel like it. Well, we're still going a little slow. The other thing is that the batteries, you know, the, when it's warm, the performance improves as well because we get lower DC internal resistance in right. the cells. And she's quite cool now. But as we drive her a little bit more, she'll get faster and faster. Right. So this is obviously a world car. You can sell it anywhere, right? Well, I don't think we can sell it in Europe. They don't allow homologation. Because if you modify a car in Europe, they have type approval. Oh. And you have to meet type approval rules. So I'd say this is a US spec car. and. Wherever you can import it, good luck to you. But I mean, it's a U.S. Car. Saudi Arabia would be all right. Yeah, they'll right. be fine. Uh, Middle East is no issue, right. right? They just, as long as you have a VIN, they're See fine with it. Does. The other thing is, you know, we call it we call it stealth driving. Right. You know, no one knows you're coming, right? Right. And that's what great for. We dri do a lot of, you know, night driving. I mean, I always tell people all the fun is between 40, 40 and, and 120. 120. That's it. I mean, you know, if you're running above 185, honestly, you're just going to prison yeah. for, for years. For years. And, and you lose a car and you right. lose everything. You lose yeah. everything. I mean, I find most manufacturers now just limiting it 212 or 205. Right. Just because, hey, there's no tire available. That's true. That'll do it. And, and second of all, it's like the Bugatti Chiron. You pay $25,000 a tire because the tire must do that and you every have to time. change the tire every right. year right. To, because, you know, they have to go on the assumption that you're running 270 miles an hour all, all day all long. The time. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. And because that's 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 what it's sold under. Right. Well, there's a friend of mine who had a, a Veyron, and when it came up for his first service and his wife saw the bill, right. that was the end of the Veyron. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. To me, I, top speed is irrelevant, actually. Because it really becomes stoplight to stoplight, isn't it? Agreed. But for us, you know, for long distance cruising, we just felt that you wanted to have a very relaxed feel at high speed. Right, right. right? And if you're running aggressive gearing, 
right? Then even at your your desired 120, it still feels very highly strung. Yeah. And we want to have it. It's much more. You know, I would say it's much more like a like a Mercedes V12 bi turbo, right? right? Where you know you're doing 120 plus miles an hour, right. and it's you know it's it's 2200 RPM, right. right? And that's the sensation we wanted because if you wind the car up like a top, you know, with the gearbox or the gearing at 120, she doesn't feel. What's, you know? What size wheels you got in this? 20 We've got 21s. 21. We're running uh, 295s on the front and 315s on the back. She likes to have a very symmetrical sort of you know front to rear yeah. tire uh, distribution. I don't know. I'd go more aggressive gearing down low, give you more a little more acceleration. That's uh, that's that was always a possibility. I was expecting acceleration to blow me away, and it's right. fast, but it doesn't feel 1,200 horsepower fast. I, I mean, I think, I think my P1 would pull it. Your P1 would pull it because it's a lot lighter, Trey. We still, right. your P1 is, is almost, you know, 1,500 pounds lighter than oh, this yeah, car, easy, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the issue, right? We're yeah. carrying our, our power source with us, right? Well, she's got plenty of power, that's for sure. Yes, she does have plenty of power. And more importantly, that power is available anywhere, right? Right, right. Irrespective of what throttle opening you're at. Yeah, most uh, electric cars are limited to about 140, something like that. After that, thing. this will pull all the way to what? 207, 206. 206. Yes, she'll keep pulling all the way. Yeah, yeah. It is relentless all the way. All right, there you go. Now there you there really, you oh yeah, you really feel the pull. So, so do you have a, a a factory now, or just building? one at a time sort of a piecemeal kind of thing um actually we have a, a fairly you know uh decent sized facility right, right and um we you know going to make multiple cars at right. the same time we expect to deliver several cars in 2020. right cool all basically the same model of four door that's it it's the same model it is you know the gte you know grand touring electric that is our you know our brand and our platform right, and, right. Uh, you know we're going to build us 25 and prove that we can build, you know, a bespoke motor car um, that, you know, can be enjoyed on road and track. You know, I, I love new car companies coming along and starting because they're living in a world now, everything is negative. It keeps, things keep being eliminated. So to get more car companies coming in, especially not mechanical based car companies, electronic based car companies. So you're starting with clean sheet of paper as far as electricity and all that you know, charging systems, new kind of batteries, you know, it, it's not all based on old school, which I think is, I, I think it's just, just fascinating. You know, I always predicted that we will live in an era of boutique manufacturing where you use, for example, you sort of have it now, you find the best brakes, Brembo, you put those on the car. You find the best hydraulic or electric steering unit, you put, and you sort of assemble a car using only the finest parts available at the time you know for example you're building your own battery you're doing your own motors what you you mentioned what is what, what was the technical term you used for it you know we actually call it drive you know what we call you know the drive algorithm right because right. it's anti-spin right. right it's anti-slip right um and it's you know differential torque but it's your technology it's it proprietary is, right. yeah right. yeah so that i mean i find that uh fascinating well, it's a shift, Jay, right, from mechanical, right, to software, right, 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 where the cars are optimized around, you know, the software control. Because, you know, once you get to commodity batteries and motors, the real differentiator is in the software. Right, right. You know, the driving experience, the programmability, the feel of the car, it's all, all in software. Because there are, you know, very, very few mechanical components in this car. As I said, there are no differentials. So you just got... Really, the only old school you think you have here is probably the brakes, and you and know maybe the steering gear, maybe right. the steering gear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway, it's exciting. It's a new frontier, and it's great to see new car companies come along. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>